Here's the van um, we're going to fit in the Urban Spacer 2. It's a 2011 Citroen Relay. With these particular vans, they have a high pressure fuel system. So rather than just teeing into a fuel line, what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to put a standpipe, an extra pipe into the tank, which is not as daunting as it sounds. Under the seats here, we do have an access hatch to uh, get into the fuel tank, um, top of the fuel tank. Um, as you'll see, we're going to have to still move the fuel tank a little around a little bit. So this is the end goal that we're going to be going through. So we've got the Eversperger 701 timer uh, mounted in position up there. You can see it's on, all's good. Uh, we end up, I end up mounting the unit under here, um, just under the back of the seating. Obviously, this has got covers that go over all of it. This is one of the vents that's coming out here. We've got another vent, we've got another vent there in, in the shower. So we've still got to cover up the pipe work. This is the end goal that we're heading towards. So here's the overspace shirt out of my old van, the one I'm going to fit into my new one. Uh, this is the unit itself. Um, control cable, which goes into part of the loom. The loom then links up to the controller that's in the van. And it also links up to the fuel pump that's mounted underneath. You get an audible click from these, so I'm going to try my best to get this as far away from the actual cab as I can. So I'm probably going to mount it in the engine bay somewhere. Um, it does mean a longer cable um, running to it, but potentially it means it might be a bit quieter. Um, I've got loads of pipe left over when I initially fitted it to my van. This is actually how much pipe came with it, and I think I used, well, I used this much pipe before. Just the remnants there. It's, so it's definitely um, an easy one, the controller itself, um, but just there, seven day programmable one, and a potential chance in here, um, we've got the control units for the power, because I bought the service version new, um, I did get a lot of extra little pipe works for teeing into fuel lines, um, I've got some spare clips for holding the pipe back together, exhaust clips, and selection of Jubilee clips, some of which came with it, some of which I bought extra afterwards. Um, the only thing I've had to buy new to reinstall this is this mounting plate. I could have used the old one. Um, and a new section of um, ducting. So hang on, we're going to go through it step by step. And to start with, we're going to have to have a look at this fuel tank. We do have access to the fuel tank through the top of the tank here. You can see the standpipe that I've, I've put in at the back. Um, the problem is trying to get access to that to actually drill the tank and to get this piece into the tank is quite difficult. Unfortunately, it's a job that I've had to just lower the tank off. Um, let's get started. Eh? So I've got the van on some bricks, not too high, literally just a couple of inches extra high, so I can get underneath. The fuel tank bolts, there's two on either side of the straps that hold it on. Um, there I've got an air jack underneath, but there's no need to have that under there. I find just loosening them off one at a time until um, there's only a couple of threads left. Getting yourself kind of in position underneath it, provided there's not too much fuel in there, you should be able to just handle it normally with your hand. Fast forward, getting all the bolts undone there. Um, I've got the tank lowered down so it's sat on two blocks and there's enough um, leeway in all the pipes to be able to do this. The only thing I've had to undo is I've, I've lowered it down. Is there's some little clips here that hold the fuel line, you can see one of them there and some others just here on the other side. Um, the white ones there on the other side of the tank, they hold the fuel lines in. Other than as you're lowering the tank, just reaching around, unclipping though. If it wasn't for the filler pipe that the fuel pours down when you fill your tank up, um, we'd be able to lower this tank fully to the floor. Unfortunately, where this connects to the um, nozzle, where you put your nozzle in, um, it's not a Jubilee clip, it's a snap clip. Um, and I don't have a tool to take them off and put them back on. So I'm just working with the tank on bricks, as you can see, um, which is not a problem. Once we've got the tank lowered down, we can undo the nut on the sander unit, this large one here. Um, the way I did this is I just got a piece of wood, put it up against it and used a hammer to tap it around um, to just crack it off and then I was able to undo it by my hand. The reason for undoing this is to reach in and hold something to catch the bits that are going to fall uh, potentially into the tank if we drill a hole in it, um, as well as for when we put the fuel standpipe in. Um, the standpipe actually has to come from the inside of the tank out, it's um, bigger on the inside, so it's not like we can put it in and it just expands. Um, unfortunately, we've got to do that from the inside of the tank. So, unfortunately, drilling the tank, I didn't manage to get any footage of due to holding the drill, the hoover in the right place. 
and everything else. So I thought I'd go through it on this. I've got a, an old tank here that I took out of another van. The um, the hole you need to drill, it'll depend on the standpipe you bought. I picked mine up off eBay. Um, it's just a cheap standpipe, just type in fuel standpipe. I'll try and include a link in the description, but if not, just search on eBay, you'll find one. The, um, you've got a couple of options for drilling a tank. You've either got a hole cutting saw, such as this one, um, or you've got a, a wood drill bit. I opted to use a wooden drill bit, and the reason for that is, as it's cutting, um, as we're cutting with it, any bits that it makes, okay, you can have a hoover set at the side, ready to go, and it sucks all those bits up. Such as this, cut some of the bits actually end up inside the, the tube itself, and obviously as you punch through the tank, they're all going to fall into your tank, and that's more you're going to have to pick up. Um, with this tank, I'm with the van, I didn't have to drop the tank off, I didn't have to drain it, all I did, I made a little cup, much smaller than this one, but effectively the same, which I just posted in the hole underneath and I held to the side which was then able to catch all the bits and then I was very careful I just brought that back out and I actually managed to catch a fair amount of swarf I hope I caught it all um, if not the tiny amount in there I'm hoping won't cause me any problems so that's how I did it got my hoover in place weighted that down next to where I was going to drill got my drill got the bit started going one hand underneath one hand underneath quite complicated to hold and trick it so i would advise if you need a hand for any part that's probably the bit that's going to be the most help um i couldn't actually get my drill in um above the fuel tank there wasn't enough room so what i ended up doing was uh, i just took an angle grinder you could do it with a hacksaw as well and i ended up hacksawing a bit of my uh, drill bit off so it was left this long tried to fit it in again there wasn't enough room between the tank and the vehicle so i just cut a bit more off and then there was enough room then uh, obviously not great i've ruined ruined this drill bit but i can still use it so looking down into from the top now onto the tank you can see the hole that i've drilled there um i actually ended up taking off um the cables off the sending there's no need to do this i will go through putting them back on in case you take them off the only reason i did is because i managed to drop the o-ring um into the tank which was really annoying i had to fish around in there with my hand it was absolutely horrible and to do that i had to uh, take the pipes off i had to lift the sender unit out far enough to be able to get my arm in so here's the bits for the standpipe we've got a, um, the standpipe itself into the tank this section here i've already cut you can see it on the line um, and all i did is literally cut through with a hacksaw and then just filed the uh, <laughs> the edge over. Uh, with it comes a washer Get um, an O-ring and nut for the top, and then literally that piece, this piece goes into the tank. That's it into the base of the tank, and then you just put your O-ring on, wash it to seal. Do it Where to actually decide to cut the standpipe off? And um, what I've done is I literally have drilled the hole in my fuel tank, um, and then I've got a piece of garden cane. Dip that in the tank to come through the the hole I've made all the way to the base of the tank so it touches the bottom and then I literally have just put a mark on it um, where that came to line that mark up with the, the top and then I've decided I don't want it at the very bottom of the tank I don't want it sucking up any rubbish and I don't want it to be able to empty my tank so uh, I've put my stamp pipe in put my washer on my nut and and it's curved now I'm assuming it goes downwards Got the uh, the pipe onto the fuel stand out. Got it pointing the direction I want. I'm taking it towards the front of the cab. Um, and then we've got the sending unit. The thing to not forget to put back in is the o ring, the one that I had to fish out know, of the tank itself. So I'll just get that back on there. So I've managed to uh, get the cap back on. So what I'm going to now do is just nip up the, uh, the top of the tank. I'm just tapping the nut there. So, uh, not huge amount, just until, yeah. So I'm just going to then connect all the things back up. Now move forward, get yeah, moved back. Just going to pop it forwards, put it into our pipe, and press down and it locks and then we just push the plastic piece back. Something for this one, so check that that piece is pushed forwards, which it is. So I'll through the gap there, just in the top. And our pipe. 
push it on so it works. And then we slide that little collar back into place, which locks it. So here we are on the top of the tank again. Uh, electric connector is kicking on. So if I can find it, this yellow bit um, goes to this side closest to me. So just put that on. I find it easier here to use the uh, the camera to see and this filler cap. So it's got an iron ring seal there. Need to replace it. Just run it over that hole. Press it down and line up the pin. That's it in place. Push down as far as it'll go. Twist that back on. So we've got our return, our main feed, both locked in, both fully on the check. Give a little touch to check. Beautiful. So once we're happy that all of the standpipe is correctly installed, it's a case of just getting the fuel tank back onto the van. As you can see here, I've just manhandled it into place by putting my body underneath it and then I've done the uh, bolts up. It's not too difficult, provided the fuel tank's not too full. So yeah, and that's the procedure finished. Fantastic, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out part two, where we'll be mounting the unit in place. Um, if you've not subscribed already, click subscribe and that'll keep you up to date with these videos. Also make sure you check out the companion video where we have a look at the angles and other things to do with um, the technical details. Um, definitely worth checking out. They're available on my channel as well. Thanks a lot. Bye.